What does a community association do? How do I stay involved in local politics? Why does shopping local matter? Engaged Citizen is a field guide for those curious about changing the way they engage with their local community. Each episode examines a popular concept through expert interviews delivered in layman's terms. Welcome to Engaged Citizen, an informative docuseries inspiring the next group of engaged citizens. My name is Joel Stretch. I play in a band called Star Painter from Lethbridge. We uh, put out a record in 2020 called Bear Me By My Family. That was our first album. And we're just getting ready to release our second album, our follow-up called Rattlesnake Dream, uh, coming out in June. This album was um, recorded at home, mostly at my house and at Joel Gray's house um, over the course of I'd say uh, six months or so, maybe a little bit longer than that. This was um, our first kind of serious foray into self-recording. We had done kind of a practice uh, three-song EP that we put out um, just to kind of see if we could do it and uh, decided that it was something we wanted to try. And so this is our first um, our first dive into doing a, a full-length recorded ourselves. So it was a lot of work and uh, lots of learning along the way. Um, a lot of heavy lifting for Joel. He was engineering the, the album and so lots of, uh, lots of heavy lifting from him figuring out uh, which mics we should use and all the mic placement and uh, a lot of editing and that kind of thing was done by him as well. Um, but also pretty satisfying and rewarding to make something uh, independently, like just uh, no uh, no outside influence, um, basically self-produced and self-recorded and that kind of thing. So it's called Rattlesnake Dream. Um, it's about an actual dream that I kept having, where I would be walking in the coolies in Lethbridge and um, end up in a physical altercation with a snake. <laughs> I would uh, in the dream usually I'd be walking, and uh, in real life in in Lethbridge there are lots of uh, snake-like sounds. Uh, when there aren't snakes around, the dry grass kind of like brushing together and uh, if any animal moves through it, it's uh, kind of snake-like in how it sounds. And so I think uh, a lot of the time if I'm uh, running or biking or walking in the coolies especially, uh, there's sort of like a heightened awareness of snakes for me. I'm a, a little bit, uh, there's kind of a phobia there, but also sort of like a real life uh, actual danger element. There are lots of rattlesnakes in Lethbridge. Uh, and so, anyways, I, I kept having this dream where I would be walking and hearing uh, snakes all around me. Uh, there wouldn't be one, but then all of a sudden there'd be one, like, right in front of me. Like, I'd come around a corner, and then it would, like, jump at me, and we'd basically be fighting. And usually that would be when I'd wake up. It's kind of like a messed up dream. Uh, but the funny thing, for me anyways, is that I, uh, anytime I would share that dream with somebody from town... They'd be like, oh yeah, I dreamed that too. And it seemed like it's almost like a collective, like shared uh, dream that we're all just having uh, when we go to sleep at night. Uh, but I had never, I'd never had a conversation with anybody about it until I was kind of trying to work on this song. And as I was telling this story, uh, people were usually less, uh, less impressed by the dream than I thought they'd be because it, the answer was always kind of like, oh yeah, yeah, me too. And so I think uh, for me living here, uh, it, felt like maybe sort of like a secret shared bond uh, for people from around here that I wanted to write a song about and uh, also sort of use as a metaphor I, I think in small towns uh, and I don't know maybe in any communities I've mostly lived in 
uh, small towns and in Lethbridge now, which is still a fairly small city, uh, a lot of the bonds are secret bonds. It's kind of like unspoken shared commonalities where uh, the things you have in common, um, a lot of the time you don't even think to mention. And so the rattlesnake dream sort of represents that for me where it's um, something that a lot of us have maybe shared, but uh, maybe take for granted or something. I don't know. Lots of this album is about, um, I think it, it's from like kind of a, a small town perspective or even a small city perspective where there's lots of focus on um, like staying or leaving. Like I grew up in a small town and it seemed like that was a topic on uh, a lot of people's lips and a lot of people's minds is like, well, who's leaving town or who's like moving back to town? Uh, and that seems to be kind of uh, a trademark sort of small town or small city conversation where it's like, uh, well, who's who's moving off to the big city or who's moving back from the big city or who's never left or uh, who, who's who likes it here, who doesn't like it here, that kind of thing. Uh, and so I would describe the album's lyrics as maybe um, small towny for, for that reason, where that's uh, some of what the themes are, but also uh, themes of um, like family and maybe how that plays into your choices to uh, live in a place or not live in a place. Um, and themes of, I would say, aging as well, just like getting older and trying to uh, just like make the most of your time, I guess. Like, I feel like um, I've been an adult for about a decade now. Uh, and so it's easy for me to kind of count off the future decades where it's like, okay, for the first time in my life, I feel like I have a picture of about how much longer I'm going to be alive. And for me, that's given me a little bit of urgency where it's like, okay, if I have whatever, uh, if I'm lucky, four or five more of those, those decades that I just had, what would I like hope to have done with, with my time? Or uh, I think uh, how, how I want to have like treated the, the people around me or um, how would I you know, want my wife to think of me at the end of my life or that kind of thing. So those kinds of questions. Oh, 
I would say that um, recording this album at home was for sure inspired by other people in the Lethbridge community that have done that first. Uh, one being Brenna Lowry, uh, who's recorded uh, some incredible stuff at home that has done uh, very well outside of Lethbridge too. Like I, if I remember right, I think it was like the number one album uh, on campus and community charts for a while kind of thing. Like done really, really well, just tracked in her living room uh, and mixed by a friend who lived in Lethbridge at the time. Uh, and it sounds incredible and it sounds like her and very unique and very singular. Um, another person who did that is uh, Skinny Dick. His album um, Get to Know Lonesome was tracked in a friend's living room and it's another one of my favorite albums from around here. So I guess bigger picture, what I really like about the Lethbridge arts community and the music community is that people um, just want to get stuff done using whatever tools they have. So like if uh, whatever, if you if you get a grant or you have the right connections, um, by all means, spend the money and make a fancy record. But if you don't have those things, make a record anyway and do like your very best work, like uh, whatever tools are available to you, actually try and like do a good job. And um, I've been really inspired by that personally, where it's like kind of wherever you're at, just try to uh, do the best that you can with the people who are around you and the skill set and gear and whatever. Uh, and I would say that the Lethbridge music community uh, fosters that and celebrates that. And that's meant a lot to me and has, I think, given us the confidence to kind of take that step to self-produce and self-record uh, this album. Um, I think a big part of um, a big part of having a successful um, arts community or music community is having spaces to um, exhibit your work basically like if you're going to have a music scene you have to have places where uh, bands can uh, play a show or go watch a show um, and it has to be like uh, a space that you actually want to go to. I think most towns have a spot that you could play, but uh, but not everywhere has a place where you want to play or where you want to hang out. So I think for sure having the Owl in Lethbridge, um, as long as I've lived here, the Owl has been here. Uh, so it's hard for me to comment, it, uh, comment on it as a catalyst, but I think for sure, uh, from my perspective, that's kind of a place where um, arts community is fostered kind of day in, day out. And if I'm writing a song a lot of the time that's where I'm imagining myself uh, playing it <laughs> that's where I, where I want it to to do well or whatever those are the people that I'm picturing playing for um, but I think um, across the board like having SAG and CASA and uh, some of those art spaces fosters uh, art communities as well where it's like I think people are more inspired to create if they can picture what it might look like for their work to be received if, if if you've never been to an art show, it's hard to like create something that might do well at an art show. But once you've uh, been able to access that and seen maybe some friends do it or mentors do it, it's easier to be like, well, that's something that like maybe I could do if I like put the work into that. that Lethbridge has a specific sound um, I think because the community is sort of small the genres uh, or musical styles seem to get less split up like I think in a big community um, if you're a punk band you can play with only punk bands and go to only punk shows and there can kind of be like a subculture uh, of that but I think in Lethbridge um, if anything People are pretty open-minded to uh, uh, other styles of music than maybe what they play. Like you can go to a bill and there will maybe be uh, a country band and, and a rock band and uh, maybe like a spacey folk band or pop band or whatever all playing together and going to each other's shows uh, and genuinely appreciating what each other are doing because the community is quite small. Um, that being said, I would say a lot of my favorite albums that have come out from around 
Lethbridge do have an element of uh, like earthiness or sort of like rusticness where um, I think maybe the like dryness or barrenness of the land is uh, reflected in the sound or may maybe in the lyrics but more so in the sound uh, but that does kind of still I would say go beyond genre like I can think of uh, some punk albums come to mind that I would describe as sort of like dry or earthy some like uh, alt country albums come to mind that have that same sort of like sense of open space um, and I think for me I maybe project that because I live here and because I see those people around here I imagine their music in that space I'm not sure if that would come across to somebody uh, not from Lethbridge but um, I do see that as maybe like the through line I think Lethbridge is a pretty safe place to give something a try uh, and fail or succeed without it really having to uh, fear embarrassment or <laughs> uh, whatever. Like, I feel like if I wanted to uh, try out a completely different, like, artistic model or sound or approach, um, I could get up and give it a try, and if it sucked, uh, people would maybe tell me it sucked, <laughs> but it wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be like a permanent stain on my uh, record as a human or as an artist or whatever.